We used to meet in various members' homes. There were very few people who of the Jewish faith here on the island 55 years ago. For as much as we had in the way of religious services at home, served the purpose very well. For the Passover holiday, the first night of the Passover, the different families would bring their family food here, and we'd have a little Passover Seder and a glass of wine and the unleavened bread. You know my house, the dining room connects to the living room, and they had these sawhorses and boards put over them and tablecloths over that so that we had a, a whole family celebrating religious life to a certain extent. Passover was an important holiday, and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And that was about it, actually. So there were three holidays that we observed. Going up, but because Christmas comes at that time of year, Hanukkah has become more important on the Jewish calendar as sort of a consolation prize for the Jewish children of the Jewish faith, I think. It's a very minor holiday. Before they began to have services here, we went to New Bedford to attend services there. And one year there was a hotel in Onset, and they stayed open longer so that people of the Jewish faith could go there for the High Holy Days. It was sort of like going to a vacation resort, you know, and, and the men would go to services and the women would prance around in their new dresses or whatever, and that was the High Holy Days for a child. This is what the High Holy Days were all about. Of course, as you get older, you begin to learn a little more on your own. When I was a youngster, there was the Hebrew teacher who used to come over once a week. Mainly, it was to teach the boys. Girls were not important in my, my generation of growing up. We were second-class citizens as far as families were concerned. Uh, I had good parents, but girls were not important. But uh, he would teach uh, Hebrew. As a matter of fact, my mother used to sit with us in the evening trying to teach us how to read the Hebrew letters. I didn't understand it as a language, but I could recognize the letters and could put the words together. And this retired Hebrew teacher would come over, and he told my mother she was wasting her time. We didn't have a Torah until we got the building, because then you had a place to keep the Torah. So the first Torah was bought by the Kronig family in memory of their parents. It was dedicated in memory of my father's and his brother's parents. So that was the first. There's two Torahs there. One was rescued from a, a, a synagogue from somewhere in Europe. It survived World War II. And so somehow or other, we were informed about these Torahs that were available. So we have two of them.